Hey all, Pixel here, Improbable Garage, and I am up at stupid early in the morning because, well, I bought another car. And anyway, uh, give me just a second. Sorry about that. What was I saying? Oh, right. I bought a car. Um, this isn't about the car though this time. So what I'm going to do with the car. So, oh, he jumped you as soon as I got out of this airport. All right. So I'm sure all wondering what the hell did I travel to the other coast to buy? Ta-da! It's a 2004 VW Passat 4 motion, 1.8 liter turbo, 5 speed. Why did I buy this? Because I wanted to do a road trip across the country, I couldn't figure out the logistics, and then a friend of mine was selling this for $1,000. Runs, drives, everything, legally registered, and that just ended up being the easiest way to do a cool road trip across America. Alright, so what the heck is going on? Did I suddenly develop a passion for early 2000s Volkswagens so much so that I had to fly to the other coast and buy one? No. I've wanted to do a cross-country road trip for a while, and I was really trying to figure out how to make one happen this year, and the logistics just didn't work. I did not, I could not take enough time off to drive one of my own cars across the country and back in the amount of time it would take for that to not just be hammer down, miles, nothing else. So... I was actually looking into, well, maybe I'll fly out to the West Coast and find something for sale. Maybe I'll buy an interesting old car out there that doesn't have rot and drive it back. But if I didn't find anything, what do I do? I mean, would I end up having to just desperately choose something and make a bad decision and have it die somewhere on the way? And then once I got it back, what would I do? I have a bunch of cars already. And so right about the time I'd kind of resigned myself to, this isn't going to work. This friend of mine bought a brand new car and needed to get rid of this facade that they bought new in 2004 and because they um, just kind of wanted it gone and also because they did a lace paint job on the front and because it needs some work and whatnot they just wanted to get rid of it pretty cheap and so they said yeah I'm gonna put it up on you know, for sale for a thousand dollars, and I was like, done, sold, fine. So, let's start by talking about the car. Like, like I said, 2004 Volkswagen Passat, it's the four-wheel drive, four-motion, it's got a five-speed, it's got a 1.8-liter turbo in it. They've owned it since new, it has just over 200,000 miles on it right now, and in addition to what the outside looks like, like you saw, they half painted it, I've now sprayed more paint on it, we'll get to that. So as you'd expect with a thousand dollar car, it's got some issues. Let's run through the big ones. One, the airbag light is on. I have no idea why. At some point, if I get a chance, I'll swing by an auto zone or something and see if they can pull the code and find out what it is, but I'm probably gonna ignore it. Two, it has a cracked motor mount or transmission mount, something. Their mechanic said, it's not a big deal. It'll just cause additional vibration. They've been driving on it for tens of thousands of miles. It's not gotten any worse, so I don't care about that. Um, the orifice tube in the AC system is apparently somewhat clogged, so the AC kind of sucks in traffic. If that becomes a problem for me, I'll do a quick, quick and nasty dirty fix of that, because the orifice tube itself is a couple bucks. And then the big one that will be possibly the biggest problem is the right front outer CV joint, the boot is completely torn open. Um, they don't know how long it's been because they took it to their mechanic right after I bought it to just sort of make sure, because I was driving across country, that there were no issues, and they found that. I have an axle in the back. I actually ordered one, had it shipped to their house. It's sitting in the back of the car right now, but I didn't have the tools to replace it. They don't have, they're not a, they're a take it to a mechanic person, not a do-it-themselves person. So, hopefully it'll do 3,000 miles before it explodes. But if it starts making scary noises or something, I have the parts, which means that even if I'm in podunk nowhere, I can't get 
parts for a 20 year old facade, I have the needed part. So I feel pretty good about that. I also have 100 mile tow, so if the axle does explode, I'm not stuck in the middle of nowhere forever. Why am I driving across the country in a thousand dollar car? Let's do that one next. What are you doing? Oh. Sorry, my phone is trying, I'm trying to navigate, but my phone has decided I don't need to see the navigation. I need to see everything else. Um, yeah, I need a longer power card so I can put it on the mount so I can see it properly, but that's another step. Uh, yeah, so why am I driving across the country in a thousand dollar car? Because I want to, because it's exciting, because it's going to be an adventure. Um, this is the perfect mix of, they maintain the car pretty well, so I don't think anything is going to explode unexpectedly, but it's a thousand dollar car that I don't have an emotional investment in and is not my kind of thing. So if it does explode in the middle of Oklahoma, I walk away from it and I get on a bus or a train or a plane and I go home and I don't stress about it. Whereas if I had done this trip in my van or the cube and something bad had happened somewhere, it would become a whole, how do I get it home? Oh my God, I have to wait for it to be fixed, blah, blah, blah. Um, doing it in a crappy car, it's more exciting and interesting. Um, I actually priced a rental car right after I paid for this. Um, to do the same trip in the same amount of time and the cheapest dinkiest compact rental car was fifteen hundred dollars so it's cheaper to do this and they don't let you spray paint rental cars or yeah they get very upset if you spray paint rental cars so this gives me a freedom to do really whatever the hell I want that something like that would and when I get back to the East Coast I have a slightly interesting and obscure car that has no rust because it's a California car. So there's good odds I can get most, if not all, of my money out of it. It's, there's even a chance I can sell it for enough to pay for my trip. But I don't really care about that. Again, if, if, if I lose out money on the car, I'm still ahead of if I did this in a rental, and I still have the trip. So yeah, that's it. Right now I'm heading out of the San Francisco Bay Area, heading towards the 99, so that I can head towards Vegas. I will catch up with you at the next interesting thing. So I know I'm just going to keep getting fascinated by landscapes, but these hills are wild compared to what we get in New England. Just like, they look, not fake is the right word, but like, the only thing that's got a shape even remotely like this in New England is when we have a we pile up a, a landfill, but these are clearly natural. But just that, that, yeah, I don't know. They're just really neat. I like these hills. Good hills. Well done. More just wild landscape. Dead flat, dead flat, dead flat. Hill! Mountain almost. It's probably hill, but yeah. This is super cool. I love it every minute of this. So definitely part of why these hills are fascinating me so much is, as a New Englander, everything that isn't populated is covered in trees. Like, just in general, like, it's very rare that you have areas that don't have trees on them that are, don't have, otherwise have civilization or farmland or whatever. So the idea of these extended hills with either no hill trees on them or in this area just a few trees on them is so weird and alien. Like, it looks like, to my eye, a sculpted landscape. Like, these hills look like somebody's out there mowing them something and that's just, that's just super weird to me like obviously that's not the case obviously this is a local geography but I think that's why I'm so fascinated by them yeah this whole valley is really crazy like, I'm really like loving this area what the hell look at this it's amazing just this deep green valley is like where the heck did this all come from Look at this, this place, this one little road that's just the connector to the 99 is so goddamn beautiful. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm loving every freaking moment of this. Oh, look, look, giant freaking lake reservoir, what, reservoir, San Luis Reservoir. Wow, look at that. That's amazing.
So apparently this road that I was driving down that I was going absolutely feral over is the Pacheo Pass. So, yeah. So, I don't think the camera is going to even remotely do it justice, but it's beautiful out here. This is the reservoir. I'm just, oh. I'm so glad I stopped at this little rest area just to look around. So let's talk a little bit about my trip. I flew out here yesterday, which was Friday the 29th, I think. Today's Saturday. I spent yesterday, I was supposed to be painting this, the rain interfered with that, but I went to shopping for supplies and whatnot, hung out with my friend. And I have until, it is now Saturday, I have until next Sunday to get back to Rhode Island. I'm picking mostly a southerly route. I've got some specific stops planned, but I'm also very much open to whatever I run into along the way. This is about getting to drive across America. This is not about hitting specific places or things or whatnot. I'm neither doing the touristy route nor avoiding the touristy route. There's some stuff I want to see. There's some stuff I just don't care about. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's literally as far as I've got this planned. There's a few friends I'm going to get to see that I don't get to see because they live, you know, halfway across the country or whatnot. So I'm excited for this. And we'll... It's going to be an adventure. That was the whole point of it. I wanted an adventure, and I'm getting an adventure. So I'm super happy about that. But I need to get on the road again, because there's a place I want to go in Vegas that closes at 5. I will say I've put about 100 miles on it so far, and it's not bad. The, I haven't figured out if the front seat's uncomfortable or if I haven't gotten adjusted right, but it's got it rides nice. It's got plenty of power. It's got all the like toys and bells and whistles. I think it's gonna be a good little steed for this trip. So while we're stopped here, let's get a better look at the car. Now that it's not crammed in a garage on a wet day. So I painted the blue and tan. That's part of the thing I'm planning to paint down the side. We'll get to that when I get to it. I also did the teeth. My friend had done this lace patterning. The clear coat was failing on it, so they were decorating it. This was also on the front fender and the front door, but they hadn't gotten to the rest of the car. And they had sanded the roof, but not gotten any further. And then this side I also got some paint on. Pulling off the highway because I just noticed a World War II bomber parked on the side of the highway. So we're gonna go take a look at that. <clears throat> she doesn't like that idea. Alright, this is super cool. Plaque, which is good because I don't know my bombers super well. But how neat is that? A tribute to the men of the 379th Bomb Group Heavy, only unit ever awarded the 8th AF Grand Slam Award. Best bombing, greatest tonnage deliver, lowest losses in abort rate, April 1944. People's names I can't quite make out. I don't know what that is then. Tell me what the neat plane is. B-17. Haha, <laughs> here we go. American veterans and vets this... Wow, that's cool. These things are amazing. They're both much bigger and much smaller every single time I see them than I expect them to be. That's so neat. There's also a jet over here and nothing against it, but if it doesn't have a propeller, I can't really get excited. Oh. It just seems appropriate that I have, you know, sort of bummer nose art teeth on the front of this, now that I've just stopped for that. All right, well, update. Um, that stop at the Overlook 
and another stop I had to make at Walmart is now going to make me too late to get to Vegas in time to go to the Atomic Testing Museum. Um, I don't regret any other stop. The Overlook was really pretty, and I had to stop at Walmart because the this car sat. I bought this car a month and a half ago, so it's been basically sitting that whole time, and the windshield was really, really dirty. And driving with the sun, I couldn't see properly. And when I tried to use the wipers, I discovered I had communist wiper blades. They didn't really remove the water, they just spread it more evenly. So I had to stop at Walmart to get something to clean the window with and new wiper blades. Turns out this has weird wiper blades, so that took two tries. So now, even if I were to skip the 99, go back, because I just passed five, and take that, I would get in closer to seven, and the museum closes at five, so I've... I don't know that I was going to make it before, but now there's no chance whatsoever. So I'm a little bummed, because it would have been cool to knock those both off tonight, and then I could have either put a few more miles on, or been able to leave first thing in the morning. I haven't figured out what I'm doing, because rules for this trip are be willing to shed stops, be willing to add stops, do whatever's fun at the time. So the other thing I want to see in Vegas, which is the Omega Mart, uh, Meow Wolf installation, that's open till 11. So I think my current plan is get to Vegas with no hurry whatsoever now because it doesn't matter when I get there. And then um, do Meow Wolf and kind of decide from there. If I decide I really want to, like if, if I'm done driving, I might as well stay in Vegas, do the Atomic Testing Museum in the morning. If I want to put a few more miles under my belt, I'll skip the Atomic Testing Museum and do that instead. Welcome to Ketcha Happy, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. It is a town in the past at 4,000 feet. Pulled over here because I realized I had not been paying, paying attention and I was low on gas and I decided it was dumb to go any further into the cold pass without proper amounts of fuel. So I had to suffer by paying $5 a gallon for basic 87 octane. Hopefully this engine will be okay with at this altitude. But continue on California Speedway business from three quarters of a mile. It is so much colder here. Oh my god, I nearly froze putting gas in, even though it was t-shirt temperature down below, because I'm not used to this kind of thing. I didn't even think about it for a half a second, which I clearly should have. So I'm now gonna run and grab food real quick, because I probably shouldn't also go to the pass needing to pee and hungry. And then I will assault the pass. So, much to my amusement. It is my first time ever in the desert. I, like, not exaggerating, it's the first time I've ever been in the desert out here. And it's raining. I'm just so amused that I have come to the desert where it is raining. But it's beautiful out here, so I'm not unhappy. Wow. So it turns out there wasn't much pass left. I assumed it went down as far on the other side, but apparently it doesn't work, it doesn't slowly. So that part was underwhelming, but okay, I didn't really want to go up into where there was snow and the clouds sitting on the surface. Uh, yeah, I'm in the desert. Well, I'm in the desert. I just pulled over because I wanted to look around a little. I'm not going to go far out there, I'm not a fool, but because it's the rainy season, 
I'm in the desert and there are flowers. And that makes me happy. All sorts of little tiny flowers. It's kind of amazing. Like, I mean, this whole place is kind of amazing, but also just like, it's kind of amazing to be here when it's green. Because I'm sure I have a completely different image of this now in my head forever than what other people think of when they think of this area. It's just, it's really pretty. It's beautiful here. I found a sculpture park! I'm sure there's a more sensible way to do this, but I ended up driving basically randomly through the desert until I found another way into it. Um, I'm not going to stay here long because it's getting cold and about to get wet, and I want to be in Vegas before it's too late. Too late! But, hey, let's look around. I... don't know what is going on here. Okay. Roadmap for the transmission of the Chinese Communist virus COVID. Okay. It's a crazy person. Got it. This is the result of a crazy person. Wow. Okay. Not only do they claim it's the, the Chinese Communist virus, but they claim that the Chinese Communist Party is who burned down their sculpture, so they built another one. Whew. That's wild. Um, I'm not going to wander around here too much longer because, yeah, this is not my kind of vibe. So, I'm going to get back on the road. Something's happened on the road ahead because there's traffic to the next exit and then an accident and then multiple road closures. So it looks like I need to get off at Baker, which that exit would have done, and go the old road, essentially. Which, of course, I bought tickets for Omega Mart for 840. I was going to get into Las Vegas at 8.09. Now I'm going to get in at 8.23. So that's just eaten up a lot of my comfortable cushion. Whew. All right, so I know it's not going to show up well on the action camera, but that line of traffic just disappears up over the hill. There's just red tail lights until I can't make them out anymore. So hopefully going this way, north out of Baker and then over, is the right choice because that's definitely the wrong choice if I want to have any chance of getting there by 840. So I'm going to hope for the best. All right, I'm moving again. I'm a little nervous because I'm driving into a, lab, a road that said flash flood area the next 27 miles and no services for 57 miles, so hopefully I'm okay there. I saw a blinking blue light up ahead of me and was terrified this road was closed, but it's just a light at some power transformer station here. But it's... It went up to like 8. 32 delay and then went down to 829 and I think we're holding right now at, but now we're at 827 now that I'm moving so I'm not going to recover back to the time obviously of 809 that I was going to get there at but I'm adding to my cushion not taking away from anymore so that's good so here we go
All right, update. Um, that was a hell of a drive. Uh, beautiful, but also way more than I expected and hit further delays. So I'm currently like 12 minutes out, but it is currently 8.39. So I am supposed to be there for my slot in a minute and I'm 12 minutes away, assuming no further delays. So we're going to see what happens. I'm really hoping that it's not something they're super picky about. My big fear is that it's super busy and they can't just kind of bump me. But there's nothing I could do about it. They're, they're, the, uh, if I'd stayed on that highway, there was right past the exit I got off, there was a 35 minute delay for an accident. So there was no chance that that was going to get me there on time. This was the only chance I had, so I took it. But I'm approaching Vegas now. There's still no, I'm not in anything interesting yet. This is just outskirt suburb stuff. I'm, I'm just gonna pick it up when I'm there and hopefully we can get in. I can't even begin to explain this place other than that it's Omega Mart. Um, it's deeply surreal um, experience, I guess is the only way to put it. So yeah, I'm just going to start wandering around. Simply does not contain spiders. Rumored associates. Oh, those. Just so you know, I'm not going to be able to show you everything. There's no possible. Thing. Okay, that is my favorite thing so far, is the container of corn pellets and corn bits. Ah, boop card. It's supposed to boop things. I don't know what booping does, but we're going to find out. The hardest part of this is going to be deciding what, if anything, is going home with me because it's all amazing and weird and I can't, I can't take it all. What about Bianca? Tangy regret. No, oh, they've got plausible deniability. Who told you this was butter? Do not eat. I kind of want that just for the spray bottle. No, one spilled. Okay, here's where I'm supposed to boot. What just happened? Okay, I hope I don't get so distracted I forget on the way out. But I want to get some gender fluid for some friends of mine. Because. There we go.
I don't, I, This is completely nuts in like the best possible way.
Oh, silt. Good to know. We've got a whole thing of silt over here, too. I love that that's here on our third. So I was a good consumer and bought stuff at Omega Mart and then went over to their little store next door for Meow Wolf stuff and bought a little friend. Or actually, two little friends. But, yeah. Now, I need to get out of here, I think, and find a place to sleep. Because I have been up since five something this morning, and it is much later than that now. I don't know what it is, but it's late. I think it's close to 11. So, yeah, let's go find a hotel room and pass the F out. Uh, and I am safely ensconced in a hotel room. Apologizing, the lighting in here is terrible. I don't care, I'm tired. Oh, that was a hell of a day. So yeah, this trip didn't quite start out the way I had hoped it would, in that I showed up to San Francisco and it was rainy, so the prep work and the car decoration I had wanted to do on Friday, it didn't happen. I got a little bit of, I got like the, the base layer of paint on the car this morning, right before I left. I didn't get a chance to sort of film cool, hey, intro to the car stuff there but I got on the road um, Pacheo Pass was gorgeous oh, so beautiful um, I do regret taking the 99 I, I from what I read I th it said it went through the town so I assumed it actually like went through the downtown of each town so I'd get to be able to easily stop for like food and stuff but it was just exits like any other highway so I should have taken the five that would have shaved like half an hour off my time um, I had to make a bunch of stops for stuff I, a little bit of shopping I had forgotten, things I forgot I needed, and then I discovered the car had no good wiper blades and the window was really dirty, so I had to stop for that. Um, and that trip took way longer than it should have because that is a weird wiper blade I wasn't expecting. But, yeah, got through, got on the road, made a bunch of good time. I'm a little sad I couldn't go to Mirror Woods, but like I think I mentioned before, there's a shuttle or reserve parking. The reserve parking was all sold out. The shuttle, I got on the road a little before 8 a.m. The earliest shuttle was at 8.30, which would have meant then shuttling to Mirror Woods, time at Mirror Woods, shuttling back before I could get on the road, which would have pushed everything back bare minimum two hours, probably three. Um, which meant I wasn't going to make it to Vegas. There was no chance of that. Um, and I decided I wanted to get moving more than I wanted to see Mirror Woods because I have seen it before. It's beautiful. If you're ever in the area, go see Mirror Woods. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, anyway, got off track. <clears throat> Went down the 99, got on the highway, went through the pass. That was really cool. Um, had to stop top the pass for gas because this is going to apparently was a theme for today because I didn't plan and get gas ahead of time enough. I had the car had three quarters of a tank when I left, so it wasn't like I left with no gas, but that's why I had to fuel up at the top of the pass at like the most expensive gas possible. Um, with that and getting, um, lunch up there that pushed me back for every, I didn't, all those stops kept eating time from what turned out to be a way too tight a schedule. So it was obvious before I was even 
uh, I think before it was through Pacheco Pass, I was realizing I wasn't going to make it to um, the Atomic Testing Museum because it closed at five, and it just, that just got proved out by all the further delays. But um, I really wanted to make it to Meow Wolf, the Omega Mart, so that's why I was pushing on to Vegas because I realized if I if I can do Omega Mart tonight then I could decide tomorrow whether I want to do the Atomic Testing Museum and wait around till 9 or if I just want to get on the road and get moving. But um, this is actually good because my original schedule had me sleeping somewhere outside of Vegas tonight and then doing Vegas in the morning. So I'm already, you know, I was at Meow Wolf for two, two and a half hours. So if I had done that in the morning, that would have, tomorrow would have been such a short day of actual driving. But, sorry, I'm so tired, my train of thought is shot. But, so I'm driving to Vegas, I'm on the 15, on Interstate 15, um, another just beautiful place to drive. I, everything is so, it's beautiful out here, but the big thing is, I as a New Englander have no concept of the distances out here. Um, just stuff that I look at on the map and I'm like, oh, okay, that's not that far. And even like when I look at the time or the mileage or whatever, I think, oh, that's not too bad, and I don't, I haven't wrapped my head around the scale of it. So when I got sometime after I got on the 15, I realized that it probably made sense to buy the tickets for Omega Mart before they sold out. And at the time I did that, which was probably around five, this is total guess. I'd have to look at I'll have to look at the timestamps and tell myself tell you whether I'm right or not but I think it was around five it looked like I was going to get into Vegas at 809 so my choices were um 849 or 930 I think or 920 and I decided 840 is safe that's a half an hour so even if I get slowed up a little bit or I have to make it like a gas stop or something I, that'll be fine who knows I might get food beforehand um, and almost immediately after I made the, the reservation, after I paid for that ticket, I hit Baker and there was literally the first exit off into Baker. And I was like, do I want to see the giant thermometer? I don't know. I mean, I've got a little time, drove past the first exit. And in the very short amount of time between that and the second exit, traffic came to a dead stop. And it was backed up as far as the eye could see. The GPS was flipping out about telling me about all the problems up ahead and trying to reroute me. Um, there was, it took me an amount of time that was far too long to get from where I was stopped off to the next exit, which was not far because they're right in the same town. And Baker is not big at all. Uh, but like you could see me kind of freaking out in the video. I don't know how, I crop, how much I'm going to crop it down, but 809 was where I was right before I hit that traffic. By the time I got off the highway, it was telling me 831. So I'd eaten up almost all of my time. And the alternate route it was giving me was just sending me up this road that was called Death Valley Road. I checked. It didn't drive me through Death Valley. Um, but he was sending me up this road, Death Valley Road, and then across another one and down another one and into Vegas. And I was like, yeah, that's not too bad. Again, I have no concept of the scale. This is, like I said, I... so it's still, you know, it's like five, six o'clock or something. And I'm not realizing I have hours to drive still. I'm thinking like, yeah, all right, it's a detour, but Vegas is right there on the map. It's right there. Um... So I get off on that road and I start driving and I'm going to put some clips, have put some clips in, but I'm going to have cropped the hell out of the time lapse for that drive. Um, I will put, probably put the whole time lapse up, maybe with some music or something as a separate video that I'll either link in a thingy up here or in the description. But that drive was beautiful. Like just in this valley, it's just absolutely unbelievably gorgeous 
Um, I don't know if it's the most beautiful place I've ever driven, but it is the most beautiful place I've ever detoured through. Bar none. Um, it was just amazing. Just uh, the mountains, the like, cause it's in a valley with mountains at the edge, and the distance you can see kind of blows my mind out here. Again, I'm a New Englander. New England, you you don't see that. The only place you can see anywhere near as far as you can see out here is if you stand on the shore and look out over the ocean. There's no unbroken expanses like that at like a ground level way. Maybe if you're up on a mountain or something, but uh, absolutely beautiful. The road was marked that it, it there was flooding risk. Um, I came across two spots where the oncoming lane was flooded, but it hadn't flooded over onto my side of the road. Um, there was some foot race thing going on. I have no idea. There were all of these RVs with like, there were clearly rented RVs with like three letter team names and a bunch of stuff like written on them with blue tape. And then there was people running along the side of the road and you'd see the RVs both driving and you'd pass them and you'd also just see them stopped on the side of the road. And I saw, <coughs> I saw those runners all the way into Vegas. So I don't know where they started, but damn, that was a hell of a run for them. I would hats off to them. That, I, that, wow. Um, but confession, I fucked up. The, um, when I got off the highway, I had like three eighths of a tank and there was gas right there in, in Barker, but I was panicking because, oh my God, I'm running late. So I drove right past the gas station. So I got plenty of gas. Cause again, no concept of distance. And then right after I got on that road, I realized, oh, maybe I should have stopped for gas. And then there was a sign that said, next service is 57 miles. And I was like, oh, I've definitely got enough gas for 57 miles. That's not a problem at all. So driving down that road and at 44 miles, which if I had paid enough attention to the GPS, I would have seen, I turned off onto another road. I turned off Death Valley Road onto um, Spanish Trail road something like that um which was a much smaller well i mean they're both was one lane each direction but this one was a much windier tighter less lower quality road um and as soon as i turned onto that it told me i had 81 miles till the next turning so i was like oh oh i've screwed up because my two choices at that point were to drive 30 miles round trip to whatever those services were on Death Valley Road to get back to that junction for that road or drive 81 miles and hope that there's something at the end of it. <clears throat> so in the end, I was okay. Um, actually, when I finally hit a gas station, I still had like the light had come up. The, the, the car had brought put the light on saying, hey, you're at a... Uh, eighth of a tank or whatever it is it dings for um like five miles prior so i was okay but man that was panicky because i just had no concept especially because once you start climbing up the like passes and mountains and stuff you, you're going to use gas at a rate you have no concept of um but that again just beautiful road that was a different kind of beauty but a beautiful road absolutely amazing at one point i started climbing up into a pass and then as soon as i crested the pass it was this tight windy little road tucked up against the side of the mountain with like basically no guardrails and just these super tight turns which is just like a whole nother world because i just been driving on this dead straight roads in the middle of this valley um and of course the one blind corner on that whole thing uh fifth wheel giant camper was coming the other way so that was needlessly exciting um I got some images and possibly some footage of the sunset. Just, just, I didn't even see, like, I wasn't even seeing the sunset. It was just the color of the sky. Oh, wow. So, yeah, ended up, drove into Vegas. By the time I hit the gas station, I was late. Um, by the time I filmed that little bit, um, I was on the outskirts of Vegas, and I was so late. You know, when it hit, 
8.40 and I still had like 12 plus minutes to drive. I don't remember now. 12 or 20 something. I was completely freaked out. I figured Saturday night it's going to be super busy. Who knows if they're going to let me in. Who knows what what the effect is going to be. Um, so it's totally panicking. Finally got there, found a place to park, went, and there was a line just backed up hugely. Eventually got in. Unfortunately, there was no problem. They didn't care that I had an 840 ticket for, and I was there at like 9. By the time I got through the door, I think it was like 915, 920, something like that. Um, that place, Area 51, was really neat. Not quite my thing. A little too dance club stuff going on. But it was cool. And then Omega Mart itself was just so much fun. Oh, that was so cool. I think I would have enjoyed it even more with someone else, whether it was with my partner or with friends or whatever. I think that's definitely a thing. If you can go with a couple people, it just would make it even better. But, oh, that was so neat. It's, it's, I like the way they did that. That sort of weird, slightly normal, slightly surreal kind of thing going on it was so cool. Um, so many of the products in that store, in, in the Omega Mart, are actually real things that are for sale and I had to resist buying so many things because I had no idea where I would put them but they just looked cool. Um, I did buy a couple of things so we'll get to him in a minute but I bought Omega Mart postcards. There's a whole bunch of them. These are going to get sent to the friends who requested postcards. I got a lenticular Oh, those postcard. I'm going to send that to my partner. Um, I got a nutritional ideas magnet for our fridge. Nutritional ideas serving one can. Amount per serving calories 0.0001A. Tainted memories 50 milligrams, 10% of daily value. Fused neurotransmitters 2TKIU, 50% of daily values. Convenient denial. It goes on and on and on. That was just fun. I liked that a lot. I got this creepy... They sold ro false, false roses there. They called them rose beef. Because of course they did. But they had these fake roses with eyeballs in them there for sale. I was tempted by one of those. Didn't know what I was going to do with it. So I got the patch of it instead. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. And then I got Omega Mart bumper stickers. One of these is going on the cube when I get home. The other one I'm trying to decide if I'm going to put it. I think I'm going to put it on the car because that'll be fun, even though it's basically getting kind of wasted. Um, and then I got a couple cans of gender fluid that I'm going to give to friends of mine who are, in fact, you know, that fit neatly into the gender binary. And then, so I decided, okay, I can spend up to about the cost of the ticket, which was $65. The ticket varies depending on when in the week you're going. Um, I was like, I'll spend another $65 on silly stuff. Sure. So I bought all of that, and then they were like, here's a coupon for our Meow Wolf. Because this was all the Mega Mart specific. They also had a Meow Wolf, which is the people who put on those things, store. And I was like, oh, I'll go check, take a look over there. I don't know that I need any Meow Wolf merch, but sure, I'll take a look. And I walked in, and this guy was right at the entrance. This sort of weird, like cat dog twisted together thing that the cat has one eye and the dog has three eyes and I can't tell if the cat's wearing a dog or they've been fused together in some horrible accident but it was just so weird I had to, I literally was like I saw it and the first thought that went through my head was oh crap I'm buying that because of course now I've blown the, the, my, the budget I give myself but I had to have it because it's so strange um, so yeah that's that and then I left Meow Wolf, I got in the car, I got myself this hotel room, and I drove over here, and as I'm checking in, turns out there's a furry convention in the hotel next door, or the convention center, whatever, next door. So the lobby was full of fursuiters, which was cool. I love furries. Furries are great people. I've never, like, I don't care what kind of bullshit you hear online, furries are universally really sweet people, pretty much. Um, they're all really nice like yeah they're into 
you know, if, even if you're not into it, they're in, you know, what they're into, like, there's people into much more weird and fucked up shit. So, I, I can never give furries shit. And I love fursuits. They're really cool. Like, the, the skill involved. So, it was really neat to just, like, holy shit, there's a bunch of fursuiters. Um, so, yeah. That was a hell of a first day. I really... There was a lot. That was a lot. It was great. So happy. I really hope the other days are not this needlessly exciting. I hope I have good days and fun days and interesting days, but I hope that they don't start at 5 in the morning and end at 11.30 at night and involve as many ups and downs and things and excitement in the good way and excitement in the bad way and everything that this day did because I don't think I could survive eight more days of that. But that's it for now. That's, that's today in the bag. I am going to go the fuck to sleep. I will see you tomorrow.